So this video is going to be all about cellular redox reactions. So most reactions in metabolism are what we call redox reactions. So redox reactions are all about the transfer of electrons. So you might remember um, from uh, school chemistry, you might remember there was an acronym uh, of oil rig to help you remember this. So um, if we take that apart, so the oil... Uh, refer to oxidation, uh, which is a loss of electrons. So I'm just going to do electrons as an E minus throughout this. So oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction, the R, is a gain of electrons. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Okay. So um, and as I say, nearly all reactions in cellular metabolism are um, redox reactions. Um, so there are three what we call cellular reducing agents. So the first one and the one that um, you may have come across before is NAD. H, which is sometimes referred to as reduced NAD. Uh, I'm going to call it NADH because I think that's more helpful. Okay. So the reaction um, that uh, happens with NAD is this. So we have NAD plus, plus an electron, plus a proton gives NADH. And that is a reversible reaction. So let's have a think about what's going on here. Okay, so to start with, we have NAD and it's uh, plus an electron. So this is going to gain an electron through this reaction. So this must be a reduction reaction. So the NAD is going to gain an electron. So if we go back in the other direction, it must be an oxidation reaction. Okay, so the NAD. Uh, H has gained an electron. This time it's just from, you know, wherever it is in the cell. So NAD plus started off oxidised. So it had fewer electrons. It gained an electron through the process of reduction. So it became reduced. OK, so NADH uh, crops up all the time in respiration. So if you see the respiration video, you see NADH all over the place. Another reducing agent is NADPH, and the reaction is basically the same. So we have NADP plus, plus electrons, plus protons, goes to NADPH. So in exactly the same way, that is a reduction process because the NAD plus has gained electrons and the other way around is an oxidation process. Mm -hmm. uh, you might be wondering what's the difference between NADH and NADPH. The only difference is a phosphate on the molecule. So that's a, that P refers to a phosphate group. Now, NADPH is used um, primarily in photosynthesis, but it is used in other processes. So it's not something that just plants have. You have NADPH in your cells too. That P does not stand for phosphate. It does not, uh, sorry, it doesn't stand for plant. It doesn't stand for photosynthesis. It stands for phosphate. Okay, it's a biochemical description. Okay. And then the other uh, one that we have that is not very commonly used, but does come up in uh, the Krebs cycle is FADH2. Uh, so there uh, we have FAD plus, plus in this case, um, it's two electrons and two protons to give us FADH2. Okay, um, And again, we're gaining some electrons, so that's a reduction reaction. In this direction, we're losing electrons, so that's oxidation. Okay, so those are our cellular reducing agents. And if you look at uh, textbook chapters about respiration or anything to do with metabolism, you'll see these molecules NADH, NADPH, and FADH2 coming up all over the place. Okay, so let's have a think now about some examples 
of how this works in metabolism. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example is a reaction from the Krebs cycle um, or citric acid cycle. So we have malate, which is a four carbon sugar, plus NAD plus goes to oxaloacetate plus NADH. Just move that across. Okay. So in this uh, case, the reaction is happening in, in one direction, and that reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called malate dehydrogenase. So as a hint, uh, if you see the word dehydrogenase in the name of an enzyme, then that almost certainly means that it's a redox reaction that's happening. So dehydrogenases are uh, generally uh, catalyzing redox reactions. OK, so let's work through this reaction to work out what's happening. OK, so let's start with the NAD because we recognize that. So the NAD is starting off oxidized. Um, so it lacks electrons and it ends up being reduced. So it has gained electrons. Okay, so we've gone from an oxidized to reduced. So therefore, the malate must have done the other thing. Um, so the malate uh, starts off reduced. So it's got some spare electrons. Okay, so in this example, the electrons were just coming from somewhere just in the cytoplasm. Here, the electrons are coming from the malate. The malate is a reduced molecule. It has some electrons to spare in some ways. So, um, so we're going to get the electrons not just from the environment, but from malate itself. So the electrons will transfer to NAD. Uh, so NAD becomes the reduced form NADH. And malate becomes the, uh, the oxidized form, oxaloacetate, which has lost some electrons. Okay, so these reactions always goes in, goes in pairs. One thing starts reduced and the other starts oxidized, and they flip in the reaction as we transfer the electron. Okay, so there's a couple of statements that we can make uh, there. So we can say that malate was oxidized by NAD+. We have to have the NAD+, otherwise it won't work, okay? So that NAD+, um, has oxidized the malate, so malate's gone to oxaloacetate, okay? Um, so we can also say that uh, NAD+, accepted... Electrons from malate. Okay. Uh, NAD plus was reduced to NADH. And another thing that we sometimes say was um, that the NAD plus acted as an oxidizing agent okay so because the malate was oxidized by NAD plus we sometimes refer to NAD plus as an oxidizing agent okay so it was able to oxidize the malate okay so let's have a think about another example okay so uh, we might have uh, pyruvate plus NADH, in this case, gives us lactate plus NAD+. Plus. So this is a process that happens in anaerobic respiration. Okay, so let's work it through again. Start with your reducing agents. So NADH, and this time has gone to NAD+. Plus. So NADH was the reduced form. So that must be the oxidised form. Therefore, it must be the other way round, so the pyruvate must be relatively oxidised. 
and the lactate must be relatively reduced. Okay, so in this case, what has happened is NADH has given some of its electrons to pyruvate to make lactate and result in NAD+. So what can we say here? Well, we can say uh, that pyruvate, pyruvate was reduced by NADH. Therefore, NADH acted as a reducing agent. So the NADH, because it's got those electrons, because it can give electrons away, uh, it's a reducing agent. So just to complete this, so uh, NADH um, donated electrons to the pyruvate and NADH itself was oxidized to NAD+. Okay, so this is the opposite way round. Um, so in this case, we start with NADH and we're going to NAD. Um, so overall, uh, this is a, from the point of view of the pyruvate, this is a reduction reaction. So from this one, the point from the point of view of the malate, it was an oxidation. This one, it's a reduction. And we usually describe these in terms of the carbon compounds. So the other place, the other example that we have in terms of using NADH is, of course, um, in the uh, mitochondrial electron transport chain. And there are other videos about respiration overall. Um, so this is a process that happens in the mitochondrial membrane. And if you remember, there's a series of complexes uh, that are then used to power uh, the ATPase. Uh, and the first one of those, the first complex, so complex one, is called NADH dehydrogenase. So that's a clue that there's going to be something redoxy happening. So what happens there uh, is we have NADH is oxidized to NAD plus plus a proton. And the electrons start to be passed in the electron transport chain. So uh, the electrons will kind of bounce about in the electron transport chain from one carrier to another. Uh, and they eventually um, go off uh, and react with oxygen. But if we just think about complex one, this NADH dehydrogenase, so we're starting uh, with NADH, which is reduced. We're generating the oxidized form NAD+, and the electrons are being used to power the electron transport chain and ultimately to power the movement of protons and eventually the synthesis of ATP. Okay, So you can see that in uh, metabolism, um, at least half the reactions are redox reactions. So if it's got an NAD, an NADPH, an FADH2, you know that it's a redox reaction. If you see the word dehydrogenase, uh, so that's a malate dehydrogenase, this is an NADH dehydrogenase, you also have a pretty good bet that you're going to be dealing with a redox reaction.